Welcome to part two of our screencast on atlasbiowork.com, which is a, an app for data entry and presentation on landscape function. In part one, we talked about the purpose and how the design followed the purpose. In part two here, we're going to talk about how to use the app, the basic usage, and how to connect data. Okay, the first thing we need to do, since this is a web app, is we need to open our browser, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc., and go to atlasbiowork.com. That's the address of our web app. And this is, this is what you'll see. And to review, this is a web app that operates in the browser. It's not, a, it's not yet a native app that you can download from Google Play or the um, iTunes store or whatever. It can be used on many different types of devices as long as they have a fairly modern browser. It can be used off network, off the cell signal. And the purpose is it's a way to collect and organize data that can contribute to a shared local and regional intelligence on landscape function. The first thing to do here to use this is to log in. And I'll click, go ahead and click the login bar here. And in this case, I'm going to log in as a test user, which is a password thing that I've configured. And notice that you can log in with Google, with Facebook, and with Twitter as well. And if you don't use either of those, if you contact us, I can give you a personal login. But if you have one of these accounts, it's best that you use them. And they will prompt you for permission to use your Google, Facebook, or Twitter identity in order to log into this site. And so far, we've had no problems with that. But anyway, I've logged here logged in here as the test user and submitted a password. My choices here are to log out or to go home. And this is a very simple app. There's no real menu that's accessible from all locations. The main menu is the home key, the home, a home page. So if you ever get confused, if you don't know what to do, go home. And the only page that that home key is not present in is the um, home page. By the way, if you click on Info and Instructions, you'll go to the Soil Carbon Coalition website where there's a page that'll tell you how to use this and include these videos. But I'll go back to atlasbiowork.com and I'm going to enter the simplest thing in this case is to enter a new point site and observation. Now I'm in Thetford, Vermont right now and the the app has located me fairly well within about um, 60 or 80 feet or so and that might be where the internet is coming from. With a cell phone or mobile device with a GPS you should get the actual location of the device on the map here. I have to give the site a name and I'm going to call this one Thetford example. And I'm going to scroll down here and you see my latitude and longitude and I can I can do a number of different things I, I can click point on map and put my site right there or I can enter the latitude and longitude manually for example if I get rid of the minus sign I can be in the eastern hemisphere someplace but I, I don't want to do that I'll go ahead and go back to the GPS lookup and now it's a little bit closer sometimes these GPS receivers take a little while and I get two, two my latitude and longitude plus uh, an approximate indication of the accuracy in meters of my GPS receiver so I will click continue down here um, I don't know if you can see that there continue and now I'm presented with a menu of observation types that I can enter and let's scroll down through th through these here I have an infiltration production photo a 
comment, soil sample, soil analysis, and so on. And what I'm going to choose now is a fairly simple one. It's a photo. So I'll click on this and it's the description says it's a repeatable photo that shows some aspect of soil health productivity management or watershed function. So I'll click on that and notice that grayed out here under site is my name of my site plus its latitude and longitude. Now the date field is required. You have to you have to include a date and I'll put in today's date. I have to choose a file for my photo. Now this on a mobile device it'll access potentially access your camera. But here I will um, choose a photo from the photos that, that I have on this computer. And in this case I'm going to choose this one. It's from a previous monitoring session. And why you took the photo. And in this case I'm going to say this was an observation on an infiltration site even though our form is about photo. And then I'll click Submit. And you saw a brief screen that said syncing and that means that the photo and the data were being uploaded and I will quickly hit refresh here because this application sometimes caches a few things and now the photo that I've just posted appears on top here under my observations list. So I'll click on that and we see the photo, see the site, the name of the user that submitted it, the time that it was submitted and the, the date of the photo and the caption of course and a map somewhat larger area showing where this thing is okay that's how that's how simple it is to point to enter a point site with an observation let's go back to the home now now the next site I'm going to enter and again this is just an example only is a, an area site or a polygon so I'll click this and in order to get map tiles in order to see where I'm at in terms of the map you must be connected to the internet this is difficult to do offline because we don't really see where we're at and I'm going to uh, just call this one field example and I'm going to put in a value here kind of an arbitrary one for my accuracy and I'm going to zoom in the map here and I'm going to click on the polygon icon it says draw polygon and I'm going to outline this field here and I could be a little better zoomed in to get a more accurate deal here in order to close the polygon I go to the last starting point and the pointer turns into a hand with an index finger extended with a little helper tip there click first point to close this shape so I've closed that shape and I'll then click Submit. Okay, so our name is the field example and there are no observations. There are no observations. So I'll go back and I'll click on Add Observations. And again I get the menu of observation types. In this, in this case I'm going to do something a little bit unusual. I'm going to click on the production per unit of input and the site is the field example and there's a note about the instructions here and this is about production per unit of input and this is based on a 365 day thing so say we're grazing sheep on that little field and we harvested lambs today 
and before this we our the start of our growing season was one full year the area in hectares is 4.6 hectares and the the measure we're using is pounds of lamb that we grew here how much did we harvest again I'm sort of making these figures up but let's say 890 we just had a few sheep on there and the unit of input in this case is inch of rain the amount that we got in that year November through November was 42.3 inches the description was we used basic rotational grazing with some supplementation and then as I move out of this field I'll get the result which is 4.57 pounds of lamb per hectare per inch of rain and this could be any any measure of production bushels of corn um, tons of hay pounds of apples whatever it is or and it, the unit of input could be pounds of nitrogen um, tons of compost recording uh, recorded rainfall plus irrigation water and that sort of thing so I'll submit that and again if I click refresh here my production will come to the top and I can view my detail here all the fields what the measure the production input type the amount of input the description and the result as I mentioned in part one the data in Atlas BioWork is structured as a tree it's place-based the site is the foundation observations are stacked if you will on top of the site and observations can be stacked on top of each other and this is somewhat like a Lego set we can be fairly creative about which ones we combine and stack and that way we can get repeatable observations in a variety of configurations and it doesn't have to be in a certain configuration um, because this is place-based there may be unique characteristics of a site that we want to be able to capture or in some cases we've made a a, a series of observations in one place that we haven't in another and there is no intrinsic reason to keep everything the same over every place okay we've entered a production observation now I'm going to attach another observation to it and in this case I'm going to pretend that I'm logged in as a different user but I'll go ahead and just proceed here as if I'm a different user and I'm going to comment on this observation this production observation the site is the field example and the comment will be about fescue okay I've noticed that your pasture is almost exclusively fescue I get more production on mine presumably with a more diverse pasture anyway we'll submit that and again I'll refresh the screen here and we have a comment and we see that this comment is related to a production observation in other words it's not just free-floating no more than the production observation is free-floating the production observation is tied to a site the comment is tied to this production observation so we can view that production observation 
and we can also see go back to the comment this this is a child or subsequent observation so that's how the tree structure works and I could add say a transect observation to this and to that transect observation I could then add a soil analysis or a soil sample or both or a soil sample with a soil analysis tied to that soil cover changes tied to that kind of thing change over time a flexible form here where you can basically enter your own kind of data using a label value format so it's uh, pretty much a freeform thing with the possibility of adding two photos with captions and we have quite a few and it's very easy to make new ones we can make new Lego bricks as it were as it were to make different kinds of structures and one can be very creative for example the photo observation single photo with a date and a caption tied to a site of course can be used to record any number of info of observations for example a tabletop rainfall simulator observation or excessive runoff from a field during a during a rainstorm for example you, you could use the photo observation to record quite a few things the main thing that we're asking is that is it repeatable so that's basically it we have a lot more resources on our website at soilcarboncoalition.org including a monitoring guide we can also help committed communities conservation districts watershed groups with hands-on workshops and help in converting siloed data perhaps an existing GIS system that's not very publicly accessible for example into a shared local or regional intelligence on landscape function and our contact information is on our website and thanks for watching